In this video, we're going to be discussing my Frenzy tank build that I'm going to be bringing into Abattoir of Zir. This guide is meant to act as a guideline for anyone trying to mix it up or do something a little bit different than Triple Shout Barb. It's going it's not going to clear like a Hoda Barb, but this build is definitely something that can dip a little bit into Abattoir of Zir and farm up the new glyph pretty comfortably. I've set this up in a way that is majorly customizable. There's only two skills, Frenzy and Wrath of the Berserker, that's really needed. And even Wrath of the Berserker can be swapped around if need be. The main gimmick of this build is damage reduction via Frenzy, Berserking, Fortify. There's more DR from aspects that are completely swappable and customizable to better suit your playstyle. We do use certain Vampiric powers to boost our damage to acceptable numbers and also further our survivability. I do play on hardcore, so survivability is my number one priority. If you play on softcore, feel free to tweak this as needed. Again, to reiterate, this is not a min-max build by any means, and this is not an optimized build at all. This is a thrown-together build that has the tools needed to face tank a T100+, and kill screens at a reasonable speed. The build that I'm currently running does struggle with kill speed a little bit on beefy single target bosses it's not unbearably slow but your bosses aren't going to be dying in two seconds like with a one-shot death blow or a hoda build regardless here's an explanation of the build and what i personally use and also some of the things that you could swap out yourself to better suit your play style let's jump right in now here we're going to go over the build from a skill tree standpoint uh, we go with Frenzy because obviously Frenzy is what the, what the centerpiece of this build is. We're getting damage reduction with Frenzy. So we're going with Frenzy, Enhanced Frenzy, and Combat Frenzy. So what Combat Frenzy does is even more damage reduction. The name of the, name of the game with this build is damage reduction as high as we can get it. This helps us reach that potential. Moving on to core skills. I don't have a great way of getting vulnerability, though using metamorphosis with prey on the week probably would be a smarter choice here what i've been doing is using double swing for my vulnerability uh obviously enhanced double swing and violent violent double swing helps with that vulnerability if if and when i need it now there's lots of options you can do here um you can even not even go double swing a lot of people are, have been going hoda for example uh, Hoda is a very viable, disgusting damage build you can you can kind of mix in here. But we ended up going with Double Swing just to kind of play with Double Swing a little bit. Um, Furious Double Swing would be good if you're using Metamorphosis and Prey on the Weak because that can give you an even better way of getting Berserking and keeping it up time, like full time. It's all your choice, though. This is just what I chose to do with this current build. Um, going with Iron or Ground Stomp right here. Ground Stomp, Enhanced Ground Stomp, and also Tactical Ground Stomp for those moments when my Fury dips and I need more of it. I can just, it's like a shot of shot of Fury right here, and also it resets the cooldown of Leap with one of my aspects. So these kind of synergize back and forth to each other. Um, also, of course, the Sun is nice, and the pull-in effect. If you have a God Slayer Crown, Every time you use a stun or anything of the sort on an enemy that's a boss enemy or an elite or something, it, it draws them in. A boss enemy, it just gives you increased damage uh, against them. But elites, it draws them in and gives you that bonus. So ground slump is very nice to have for that. I uh, put points into imposing presence for maximum health or HP. We got points into martial vigor for more damage reduction. Now, the only shout that I use with this current setup that I'm going with is rallying cry one because i want the unstoppable but two i want the fury generation like really badly and this really helps with that i wanted to do my best to deviate from a shout build barb and i think i kind of did that with this it may have made the build a bit more subpar than others you could go a shout build and do way better i'm sure but for this in particular i just wanted to stray away from shouts as much as i could Rallying Cry is just a great way of survivability with Hardcore, with the Unstoppable, and also the resource generation bonus is just amazing if you're using something like Salig. Now, Challenging Shout is another one that I thought about going down for the damage reduction itself. Uh, the Challenging Shout is absolutely amazing, but well, as I said, I wanted to stray away from doing like a Triple Shout Bar build. 
Now moving on, we get our points into swiftness just for movement speed. This helps with a little bit of damage as well with vampiric powers. But, you know, movement speed is kind of king. Now here you got a choice. You can either go leap or charge. One of these two uh, helps a lot. I like charge for the unstoppable and the, the easy grouping of enemies. But with God Slayer Crown and Ground Stomp, I think I just don't need that. And also using uh, Rallying Cry as an unstoppable and also having unstoppable with Wrath of Berserker. And if you choose to go Metamorphosis with Vampiric Powers, that's another form of unstoppable. I didn't really quite feel the need for charge in this build. And Leap is something I feel like is kind of abandoned. But I really like Leap. It's, it's a really fun ability. It's just kind of fun to use. So I ended up going with Leap and, you know, if I don't hit anything, cooldown reduction. And of course, if Leap damages at least one enemy, we get some Fury. It's another Fury shot. So Leap with Ground Stomp in tandem, I can just keep chunking my Fury up if need be. Uh, we also have Aggressive Resistance. We're almost always Berserking, so this is flat 12% damage reduction. Um, we also get Increased Fury Regen while Berserking, and we also get fury whenever a brawling skill hits at least one enemy so when we leap on something now again you can also get this and have charge and leap or even kick kick is a very good option here as well uh any anything kind of works with this moving on to the weapon mastery tree i don't really get much i get pit fighter for the increased damage to close enemies and damage reduction again and also we get one point in the thick skin. We don't have to worry about fortify, but we do need one point into this to reach these. Counter offensive. While you have fortify for over 50% of your maximum life, you deal 12% increased damage. This is pretty nice. It's multiplicative as well. Defensive stance. Increases the damage reduction gained while you are fortified by an additional 6%. Even more damage reduction. And then moving on down here. Um, since this is a frenzy build, we're stacking as much attack speed as possible. Um, I think I've, I don't really know if there's a cap to it, but I know I swing like crazy. So I just keep upping it. I don't really know. Like I said, this build is not the most optimized. It's just something thrown together and it actually worked. We have a Wrath of Berserker as well. Prime Wrath of the Berserker and Supreme Wrath of the Berserker and also Unconstrained. This is our damage right here. Honestly, we don't really do a whole lot of single target damage with this build. We have crazy survivability with the added damage reduction. And if you choose to go Salig's, you have even more damage mitigation with your, your Fury generation. Um, you can totally do this build without Salig, though. You don't absolutely need it. But Berserk, when we're Berserking, our damage is increased nearly triple. So it's kind of wild how much damage we... Uh, we stack up when we start going Berserk and when we pop Wrath of the Berserker. Again, this is just like a baseline talent tree. Um, this build is literally... At the end of the day, it's just Frenzy and <laughs> Wrath of the Berserker. That's it. It's just Wrath of the Berserker and Frenzy. Everything else in here, outside of, you know, your, your passives here, your Pit Fighter and, you know, Defensive Stance, Counter Offensive, things like this are, are kind of a must. But as far as like what skills you like to use, use whatever you want. Honestly, you don't have to use double swing. You don't have to use ground stomp. You don't have to use rallying cry. You don't have to use leap. You can interchange any of these to anything you possibly want. And it will still work because at the core of it all, you're getting so much damage reduction. And I do know that it scales quite badly higher up damage reduction itself. But if you keep your armor high, you keep your damage resistance high, you keep your resistances, elemental resistances high, you're going to just take little to no damage. It's just how it works. Even on these high-end dungeons, we don't really take that much damage. So, like I said, anything here is interchangeable. Mix and match however you please. Anything will work. All right, and a quick note on the Paragon. Again, this is something I slapped together. Didn't look at a guide. Uh, if, if you have a more optimized version of... A paragon tree that you would like to do 100% go for it this is very unoptimized I didn't even reset the paragon board I just went with what I was leveling picking and going but you know it worked did a t100 pretty easily so like I said you can follow this if you want to if not that's a-okay as well 
Don't have to. You can kind of build your own thing with this. Anyway, if you would like to follow this tit for tat, here it is. So on the first board, I ended up putting uh, seething in here because we are using dual wielding swords for this. So increase in damage with swords. Why not? I'm sure there's better glyphs out there, but this is what we chose. I also ended up getting more nodes than probably needed down here. Like I said, haven't really min-maxed this build at all, so we're just kind of picking and going. All right, up in the second tree, we go for uh, Carnage, the Carnage tree here. And also the Glyph is Ambidextrous, since most of our damage is coming from Frenzy. We are, well, building our damage while, you know, dual wielding. So, Ambidextrous here. Give you a minute to kind of look over the Paragon tree if you'd like to copy this. Then we split... I actually go to the left first and then to the north or go to the west first and then to the north. So we'll check out the west tree here. This is a blood rage. This increases your damage multiplicative with a berserking. It's actually insane. I think if any build goes with berserk, you want to get this. You have to like actually read it though, because at, at first glance, you just think, oh, well, I'm berserking. You know, this does, this does increase damage, which yes, it does, but it increases your damage by 25% multiplicative of your damage while berserking bonus. That's insane. That can scale up pretty high. So just pay attention to this. Get that for sure. Now, the glyph is ire here. I don't even have all these maxed out quite yet, but, you know, this is, uh, this is good. While berserking, taking 10% reduced damage and also damage while berserking. Pretty solid. Give me a minute to look at that tree. Now, moving north, we go for Warbringer. Now, I don't fully know how good Warbringer is if you pick it with this current build setup that I have. I just opted not to. I wanted to increase as much uh, fury, maximum fury as possible. That's why I kind of went a little weird in this tree. Um, since we are using Salig, we actually swapped over to Salig, um, but we did use the Frenzy Barb. Um, neck piece and that actually worked quite well with this as well so just saying you don't actually need a melted heart of Salig. i know there's a billion indestructible invincible barbarian builds out there you don't really need it with this but we are using warbringer tree um the glyph is undaunted i haven't even met the willpower requirements yet i'll probably <laughs> respect some of this to meet that because look at the extra 10 percent damage reduction so of course you want that but like i said this is just kind of thrown together i haven't been maxed it completely yet but i do plan on taking this to abattoir of zir tomorrow we'll see how it works and then the final tree here is flawless technique which i don't think this is terrible but again didn't really have the points to get there we'll probably min max and maybe squeeze out some some of these uh, rare nodes i think these rare nodes are actually amazing critical strike damage physical damage like these are not bad at all and for the glyph in the final tree, we have Wrath. And again, don't even have the dexterity requirements here. Like I said, though, as far as my Paragon goes, it's something that was just slapped together, not researched at all. But you know what? We can do a T100 easy peasy, like not even thinking, really. We just run in, we hold down a button, and things die. And here we'll finally just look over some of the gear that I have on right now. I could just use a little bit more armor. With Disobedience, we almost get this up to 13,000, but not quite there yet. We did struggle with our resistances a little bit. Um, my plan was to cap out my resistances, stick some skulls inside of here, and be able to reach the, the armor threshold that is needed. But it is what it is, and what we got is what we got. So, starting off, we have Godslayer Crown. I equip this for more damage. Well, down reduction is nice. The health is very nice. Um, it's basically just for more damage on bosses, though. That's the only reason I really use this. And the pull-in effect is really nice in dungeons. Body piece. I just looked for something with plus armor, uh, life, damage reduction, the close, and also damage itself is kind of nice, but eh, it kind of rolled a little low here. But also disobedience on this. Disobedience is kind of a must for this build for me because my armor is just kind of lacking a little bit now here we have just some gauntlets with all stats and strength lucky hit chance and lucky hit chance to restore 
primary resource. Now, the reason I have these gloves, I actually had some different gloves before that were like all stats, strength, uh, crit, uh, some other whatever stat. But I swapped to this when I ended up uh, using the Melted Heart of Salig on this build. And the reason being is because, well, getting resources back is like getting a big chunk of your health back with this. I'll explain a bit, a bit more in this later. For pants, we have just regular pants, big chunk of armor, uh, some cold resistance because I'm struggling with my cold res. Also, damage reduction while fortified. I mean, we're always fortified max, so this is good. Also, since we are using basic skills 99% of the time, we're just spamming frenzy. Um, having might on here is very nice. It's a it's a flat 20% damage reduction for six seconds. That adds up. It adds up. For pant or I'm sorry, for shoes here, boots. We just have strength, movement speed, and resistances. Um, I would go triple resistance on here, but I was also looking for a little bit more damage. The main con of this build is my single target damage. AoE damage, pretty solid with a uh, chunk of health that we have. I mean, a Doombringer would be nice as well, but, you know, this is what it is. It works pretty, pretty well in dungeons. Now, for our first weapon here, we have an accelerating just mace. I was looking for anything with basic skill damage and strength. Um, damage while berserking is really nice. Didn't roll the best, but it rolled decent enough. Damage to close. We're always close when we're doing damage. And also, I'm socketing things with a topaz. More basic skill damage for me. Like I said, 99% of our damage is coming from Frenzy. Let's use it. Let's beef it up. We also have a Ramaladni's Magnum Opus, which... Rolled a 0.4 on the uh, unique aspect of it here. Um, this is just damage to close. Also get a chance to restore primary resource. Uh, plus 30 max fury. Damage with dual wielding. Like This is just kind of everything I want with a frenzy build, personally. So I chose to use Ramalodnes. I think I'm saying that name right. Um, for this, we just put Edge Masters on here. Just for a little bit of increased damage when our primary... They're available on primary resource when cast. You know, Edge Masters, you always use them. We're looking for all stats, strength, basic skill damage, and damage to close. Um, damage while berserking would have been nice to have in there as well. But, you know, this is what it is. We were blessed with a grandfather. Um, since this is an abattoir of Zir kind of build, you're going to be seeing a lot of builds with uber uniques in them. You absolutely do not need a grandfather, but obviously this helps a lot. If you're not lucky enough to have a grandfather on you or even a melted heart of Salig, I will post builds down below. You don't need these for this frenzy build to work, but they obviously help. I mean, so would a Shaco, right? Anyway, moving up. Um, one of our rings is we're just crit chance, physical damage. Damage to close, resource generation. I would love for that physical damage to be damage while berserking, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, we actually have Berserk Ripping on here to make sure that things that we hit are going to be bleeding. That gives us another big chunk of damage, actually. So that works out quite well. Um, this ring, we have a vulnerable damage, physical damage, damage to close, and resource generation. Now, again... Both of these rings have resource generation on them. You don't need that if you don't have a Melted Heart of Salig. This is kind of particular for this, this neck piece as a whole. So if you're actually using something like Battle Trance, you do not need resource regeneration on this. Um, opt for something else. Damage while berserking, for instance, is a, is a very good uh, option here. We are using a Melted Heart of Salig, as said before. Now, this thing is what kind of makes this build pretty snoozy. Uh, you can just walk in, hold down the Fury button, or Frenzy button, sorry, and just win. It, it's literally just that. You just win. You're not going to do the best damage in the world, but you will you will slay things without worrying about dying for the most part. Now, Abitoir of Zero is probably going to be chunking that damage up quite a bit, so we've, we'll see what happens with that. But this is a great intro build for Abitoir of Zero, I feel. Again, if you don't have a Melted Heart of Salig, something like a Battle Trance would work a lot. This increases your Frenzy stacks by two. Therefore, if I'm not mistaken, that should increase your damage reduction 
from Combat Frenzy by an additional 16%. I could be wrong in that, but I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Also, plus 9 ranks to Frenzy. I mean, that's a lot of damage added, too, if you're struggling on damage. I mean, this will bring our damage from 21 to 26k to... 32 to 40. That's <laughs> that's a pretty big increase in damage. Not going to lie. So, again, if you are struggling with damage, we are slightly right now with the Melted Heart of Sailor, but we are playing hardcore, so, you know, it's kind of nice to uh, be a little more safe than sorry. <laughs> but, again, this build is very flexible. You don't even need all of these aspects here and all of this gear. I would say as long as you're hitting your armor mark... And as long as you're, you know, sticking topazes in your gear and, you know, just randomly running around with Frenzy, you should be fine. Now, the vampiric powers that make this work are as so. For AoE damage, you're going to want to use Hemomancy. Or Hemomancy, I'm still terrible at this pronunciation, but we're just going to call it Hemo. So, Hemo is basically what we're using to deal with enemies as a whole um it doesn't do the most damage we do have twenty-one thousand life so it does it does chunk them quite a bit so every four seconds pretty much we're not screen wiping everything like the chunkier mobs don't get screen wiped but the the smaller lesser enemies the clutter gets wiped out usually um with uh hemo being procced here um, we are using Metamorphosis as well. Metamorphosis is for our, uh, you know, emergency unstoppables. And it also works in tangent with our Vampiric Curse and Prey on the Weak. This allows us to stack more vulnerability and just kind of keep it on things. So these two work in tangent here. Again, using Prey on the Weak, more vulnerability damage, 16% multiplicative, if it's working correctly. <laughs> there are reports that it's not, but we're just going to take it at face value here. I'm also using Ravenous. Um, Ravenous, I feel like it... Ravenous is so good. It increases your attack speed by a crazy amount. 40% um, of your total movement speed for 6 seconds. Not bad at all. And also, I feel like the, two, the three things that you need in this build are these three right here to make it even kind of semi-work. Moonrise allows you to just go basically crazy and you get 160% basic skill damage. This makes Frenzy do, you know, boost up there quite a bit. Um, but I feel like Moonrise is absolutely needed in this. I feel like Ravenous is absolutely needed in this. And I feel like Hemo is absolutely needed in this. Um, outside of these three, though, there's lots of different ways you can go about it. Uh, remember earlier I said if you don't have a Melted Heart of Salig, you use something like a Battle Trance for this build. Well, with Battle Trance, you would want to swap out maybe Metamorphosis or Prey on the Weak with something like Undying. This gives you 3% of your life, and it's doubled when you're below 50% life. What this means is, as crazy fast as you're swinging, you're constantly, constantly, constantly healing yourself. Undying is a very good alternative to use. Um, Sanguine Brace is a very good one to use as well. This is one I'll probably swap out with one of my abilities before I do Abattoir of Zier. This gives you an innate crit chance, and you're always going to have Fortify up with this. Sanguine Brace is a very, very good option. Um, some of the other ones that I'm probably missing here. Uh, Resilience, that's even more damage reduction if you're struggling, but I don't feel like it would be that helpful. Maybe it will be. I mean... If you can nullify damage completely at a certain threshold, who knows? This could be it. I haven't tried it because I don't like to get low in hardcore. Could be amazing, though. And, of course, the rest of these, like I said, mix match whatever you want. I feel like these three are kind of needed. You may not want Hemo if you decide to not do double swing. Or, you know, maybe your AoE, is, AoE clear is good enough and you don't want to run Hemo. So you could swap out Hemo for something else. But me personally, these are the three that I would recommend fully. These two, optional. With all that said, I do hope that I've explained this build a bit and made it comprehensible. If not, hey, let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to explain things a bit further. There will be a build guide in the description and comment section below for those interested in a non-video version. 
Again, this is meant to be a guideline video as opposed to a complete do this, this, and this type video. I am 100% sure that there are way better ways to maximize damage and survivability here. And hey, if you find a way, I'm all ears. Let me know. I want to hear what your Frenzy Tank build is, is doing for you. Let me know in the comment section down below. I definitely would love to hear from you. Also, good luck in the Abattoir of Zir. It's supposed to be the hardest content that they're releasing in D4 so far. So good luck. I wish you all the success. And if you're playing hardcore, stay safe. Don't be dying in there. And we'll catch you on the next one. There we go, boys. T100. That was our first T100 we've ever done. Not bad for a basic build. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe. Helps our channels out immensely. A smaller, smaller content creators. We would deeply appreciate it if you would subscribe. Um, also, we are live on Twitch Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. PDT till 9 p.m. PDT. Mostly streaming Diablo 4, but we do mix in some things here and there when the seasons start to slow down. So we'd love to have you over there as well. If you'd like to come by, stop by, say hi. I'd love it. We'll catch you then. Y'all take care.